in chapter 8, we cover prepositions and the verb of being in Greek, emi. We are now to the point where there's enough under our belts that we can begin to make some progress in even reading the New Testament, looking at some verses and, and identifying some words and putting some, some ideas together. And that is especially because we're at the point of prepositions. And prepositions and prepositional phrases encompass a large amount of the ink of the New Testament. We've covered already the four cases of Greek nouns, and now with prepositions, and the verb of being, which is the most common verb in the New Testament, we really can begin to look at our Greek New Testaments, especially in 1 John that we'll look at here in, in a bit in this slide presentation on chapter 8, and the Gospel of John. These places especially, we can begin to identify some words and, and actually do some reading. I encourage you to do that. We'll talk about that more in a few moments. First, some notes on prepositions. English prepositions, uh, words that describe a relationship between two other words or two other ideas. You remember this perhaps from English grammar class. The word that follows the preposition is the object of the preposition. The preposition and the object of the preposition together are the prepositional phrase. In Greek, we, we have some comfort in the fact that prepositions are never inflected like nouns and verbs that have endings which change the, the meaning and help us to identify person and number and so forth. Prepositions do not do that. Yet, the meaning of the preposition depends on the case of the object. So if the case is accusative, that might be different than if the case is genitive, even if it's the same preposition. Notice the example. Dia with the genitive means through. Dia with the accusative case means on account of. That is, if dia is followed by a noun in the genitive, whether singular or plural, whether masculine, feminine, or neuter, the idea is through. The same with accusative. It doesn't matter singular, plural, or gender. If it's in the accusative, it's on account of. For the next several slides, I want to introduce you to prepositions and a, a mnemonic framework through which you can hopefully become familiar with them and perhaps even memorize them. If you have your textbook open to page 61, you'll notice that Mounts has a visual graphical display of the prepositions and their spatial uh, orientations and how you can learn them that way. I'm going to produce the same, but I'm going to include uh, a mnemonic, kind of a story. It's a bit silly, but it helps to remember the prepositions and thinking of them as vocabulary. So if you have your textbook open, you can see where I am getting this information, but uh, providing along with it a mnemonic framework for you to learn these prepositions. And I will uh, note them individually where the chart on page 61 has them all together. So let's begin. Prepositions as vocab. N is always with the dative. N means in. And here's our mnemonic. Dative Dave. I want to introduce you to Dative Dave. Always has his hand in the cookie jar. We'll have this circle represent the cookie jar for the next several slides. So Dative Dave, he always has his hand in the cookie jar. In. Dia. That preposition with the accusative, as we've noted already, means on account of. Dia with the genitive means through. In addition, Aaron. Aaron the accusative or Aaron the accused. Aaron is accused of taking the cookie on account of Diana or Dia. This uh, little mnemonic phrase includes the basic components of dia with the accusative means on account of. You can memorize that, or this mnemonic might be helpful. Consider dia with the genitive. Jenny genitive takes the cookie through Deanna, that is, with the, with the help of Deanna, with her help. On, on a, 
through her as an agency or uh, a help for her efforts. A paw with a genitive means away from. Genitive Jenny uses her paw, her hand, to take a cookie from or away from the cookie jar. Ek with the genitive means out of or from uh, a larger scope than just a paw with the genitive. So here we have Jenny genitive wrecks her nails. Here the ek in wrecking her nails, taking the cookie out of the cookie jar, out of or from. The mnemonic for meta, Jenny genitive meets with her friends at the cookie jar. Meta with the genitive means with. So imagine one circle is a cookie jar, another circle is uh, her friends with her. Meta with the accusative means after. Aaron is accused of calling a meeting only after he has eaten the cookies. He calls his friends only after they're gone. Now, the qualification here, after, uh, can mean in the temporal sense, but it can also mean in the spatial sense of following after. And you'll, you'll catch those by context when you actually read. This mnemonic is just uh, intended to help you memorize the basic meaning of the preposition, uh, not its nuances actually reading, but it can help with that along the way. Ace with the accusative means to or into. Aaron would be accused of being an ace if he had enough cookies for his friends to put their hands into the cookie jar. Ace and the accusative to or into. Pros with the accusative means to, towards, or with. Aaron is sometimes accused of pressing his hand towards the cookie jar with a plan to take all the cookies. Press and pros to, towards, with, and the accusative. Hupa with the genitive means by, with the accusative means under. Jenny genitive thinks she has the upper hand, a paw upper, by standing by the cookie jar. And Aaron is accused of one-upping everyone by having a hand under the cookie jar. Hupa with the accusative and under, with the genitive means by. Last slide here with our silly story, but I hope that it uh, provides you uh, just a framework and some traction for learning. Para with the dative means beside or in the presence of, with the accusative means alongside of. So we've got dative Dave standing beside the cookie jar like a cookie piranha, para piranha. Dative Dave beside or in the presence of, and Aaron is accused of standing alongside like another piranha. Para beside, alongside of, in the presence of. Genitive Jenny, however, takes cookies from the cookie jar while the piranhas aren't looking. Para with the genitive means from. This uh, silly little story uh, can help you if you can, or you might want to come up with your own, but have some way of, of spatial recognition of the prepositions which allow that, but having a unifying framework to kind of know how they, they go. Uh, along the way, you will have uh, a great deal of enjoyment translating, doing exegesis with prepositions. Uh, many resources are available, and uh, they, they are just full of theology and can be very helpful for you. Let's think about subjects and verbs for a few moments on our way to thinking about the specific verb of being in Greek, me. As we've noted already, Greek nouns and verbs are inflected. The, the stem is altered by different endings in order to signify person for second, third person, I, you, he, she, it, we, you all, they or them. Number, singular or plural, and gender, masculine, feminine, neuter. 
The endings of words provide all of, of these nuances. The subject of the verb is identified as part of the verb, may not be written on its own in the sentence. It's implied. It's, it's there. It's translated as a part of that one word has both the subject and the verb in it. So that brings us to a me, the verb of being. First singular is a me, I am. Second singular, a, you are. Third singular, esten, he, she, it is. And Mounts notes that uh, now would be a good time to learn what we will uh, understand later and spend a good bit of time on the, the imperfect ain, he, she, it was. Ain is the past time, past uh, time, past tense idea of esten, ain in parentheses there, he, she, it was. Esten, he, she, it is, ain, he, she, it was. Es men, we are. Este, you all are. A sin, they are. I want to work for just a moment on some, some translation practice for you. This is exercise 8, page 21 in the workbook, and then we'll look at vocab in just a moment. Two notes about translating. First, don't be overwhelmed by the length of a sentence. Um, break it into parts. Break it into grammatical units. We will learn by the end of this class, uh, not this semester but next, that the best way to translate is find the verb first and then go subject and object and, and to qualifying phrases and all the rest. Right now as we're just taking these first steps into nouns, let's just break the sentence into grammatical parts. Where there's a punctuation mark, put a large line and just try to try to work with the, the words that you know within that basic uh, phrase. Or use conjunctions. If you see the word chi, kappa, alpha, iota, that is the word and, and make a, a mark there to break the sentence into a smaller unit, a unit that you can work with. And keep all prepositional phrases together. If you do these few things, just breaking the sentence up into its grammatical units, you'll be able to, to make good progress. Let's look at uh, what would be number eight here on exercise eight, page 21. Ha theos agape esten kai ha menon ente agape ento theo mene kai ha theos anato mene. You see ha theos, nominative singular, and then we have another nominative singular noun as Mounts notes. This is a predicate nominative. So it's going to be translated after the verb of being esten, God is love. Kai ha menon, we'll find out later, is a participle, the one remaining, en te agape, in love, en to theo mene, remains in God, and ha theos, en au te mene, and God remains in him. Number nine. See the nominative singular, ta sabaton. The verb is agenita. The Sabbath was, is on account of man and not man on account of the Sabbath, dia, with the accusative. And you'll notice that ta sabaton is nominative at the beginning of number nine here, the be the initial phrase of Mark 227 that we're looking at, and then accusative later. How can it be that way? Well remember the noun rules. Nominative, accusative, neuter, singular, and plural are the same in uh, the second declension. So nominative accusative Neuter, singular, are the same. Nominative, accusative, neuter, plural, are the same in the second declension. Uh, so what we've learned so far. And we'll see this to be the case throughout. So keep that in mind. Uh, and I think you'll catch on as you review your noun master case ending chart with nominative, genitive, dative, accusative for both singular and plural, masculine, feminine, and neuter. 
some vocab. Allah, uh, we've seen already that Allah's Allah, Allah means uh, an other or another. Um, I just put that here as a bridge so they don't get confused. Allah means but yet except. Chimera, hey, chimera. Uh, it sounds a bit like, come here, come here. You're maybe wanting to hasten someone because this is taking all day, chimera, day. Thalasa, he thalasa. La sa, you see there, lake and sea. By the way the word sounds, you have lake and sea. Well, keep pressing on your vocab uh, and your grammar. Again, I suggest five days a week, a few minutes in the morning, 15 minutes to half an hour, something like, like that, or even before breakfast if possible, definitely before lunch. And then in the evening or afternoon, half hour, 45 minutes. And if you do that every day, you will learn Greek.